want to do a video on kombucha making. Uh, I've tried this a couple other times at my house and I love kombucha. I like that it's got all these probiotic benefits and it's kind of like drinking soda but not kind of a cheap soda. And I like that I can flavor it with any of the fruits I have on hand, pretty much. So I'm going to show you how to make kombucha today and then when it's done fermenting at the end of the week I'm going to do a part two and teach you how to do a second ferment um, that I'm still kind of learning and working on myself but I'm excited to show it to you and let's get started. So all the things you're going to need is going to be a jar kind of about this size. I like to use this with a loose lid. I usually cover it with some kind of cloth napkin so that no fruit flies can get in. And then your, your booch starter is just going to be a bottle of store-bought original flavored kombucha. I like this brand because it's a pretty it's a pretty decent strain of probiotics so I I haven't had a problem yet with growing a mother or a scoby from this yet. I have had my scobies die a couple of times and I think that's just manufacturer error. So you need your bottle of kombucha. We're gonna use um, just plain black tea. Um, I got this at Sprouts. It's organic black tea. A whole bunch of sugar. Now if you're a little bit freaky on the sugar thing, as I have tended to be in the past, fear not because the sugar actually ferments out of the drink. When you have your finished pro product of kombucha, the sugar content is actually very low because all of the good bacteria has eaten that away and fermented because of it. I'm gonna make a batch of sweet tea and I like to use about six tea bags, six black tea bags, six cups of water and I kind of just do this with the sugar or like zhuzh it but if you want to get more technical with your measurements I would do like a half a cup. Let's make some black tea shall we? boiling you kind of just want to get it to a good simmer good boil so all that sugar really dissolves in the tea I'm gonna just explain to you why I really like to drink kombucha so if you're trying to kick a soda habit or even just a sugar habit for that matter and you're really gravitating towards those sugary coffees those sugary drinks then I would say kombucha is for you now there is a bit a bit of like a well I can't say ick factor because that's not right but it does taste a tiny bit like vinegar and if you over ferment it, it can really taste like vinegar. So you just gotta be careful on how many days you are letting it brew. I like to do mine anywhere between five to seven days. And by the fifth day, you can kind of taste it and really taste the carbonation and see that, okay, this is fermented enough. If you go past that, and I have given it just a few days because I didn't have the time to, you know, get to bottling it. You get to the fifth day, you really taste that carbonation, you know it's good to go. And it is kind of based on taste. This isn't like, it's kind of like a science, but then like not. So <laughs> let me show you the bottles I use. So I've actually just saved these over time. I keep the lids. And this is from my two prior attempts at making my own, sco my own SCOBY. And what a SCOBY is, if you've never heard of the term, or some people call it a mother, it's kind of a colonization of bacteria and cells and it sounds nasty and it kind of looks nasty, like, I'm not gonna lie. An alien, like, my husband doesn't really let me take it out of the cupboard. I mean, he's nice, don't get me wrong. He just doesn't want to see it. <laughs> um, you should also know for all you home brewers out there, you home makers of probiotics, that kombucha cannot be brewed next to a sourdough starter. So, just so you know, tip for the wise. Don't do that. So I keep these bottles. Once the sweet tea is whole, totally made and cooled, I'm gonna pour this entire thing into my container. I'm gonna pour the room temperature sweet tea over top. I'm going to cover it with a napkin and let it sit for five to seven days. And then at the end of that, please watch the part two video of this coming next week. I'll show you how to do a second ferment and flavor it with berries or pineapple. I've made a blueberry ginger one before I've made a strawberry mint one before. There's all kinds of different flavors you can do, and it's a great summery beverage, though if you're just trying to get extra probiotics, you could drink this all the time. Now, with food safety and stuff, you do want to be careful of botulism, because you are growing bacteria in your home kitchen. So just make sure all your materials are really, really sanitized and clean before you start. Make sure that you're not putting dirty hands into 
the kombucha once you've started fermenting. You just want to make sure you're very cleanly with everything so you're not cross-contaminating. Don't make your entire family like go to the ER. That would be bad. Once you have your sweet tea and your kombucha poured into your container, and you've waited your five to seven days, it's gonna look something like this. And then, like I said, for the part two video coming up, go ahead and watch that so you can see how we do a second ferment if you wanna flavor your kombucha. On that note, go get messy, have fun, learn, and I'll see you again next time.